Hey everyone, welcome back to another Biper tutorial, and this time we're going to show you guys the new page that we just created called the Mechanic Explorer. Now the Mechanic Explorer is quite unique in any type of analytics platform, and we just give you control over any type of querying or data analytic that you guys want to build without using any type of SQL, without having to have your own S3 database and then do SQL over that. Whatever you guys, this can be a visual builder that does exactly what you would want to do in there. So let's get started off. As you can see, we're on the Mechanic Explorer right now, and we have multiple sections. The first section we have is events. This is where you'll be defining your events. As you can see, they're going to be named event A and event B and so on and so forth. And what this does is that this sets up so that you guys have a single thing of it, like I am selecting this group of events, event A. Okay. Now I have another section called filters. Now this is where we add segments. Now I want to segment the users that I want to filter by and we just hit add segment. These are named segment one and segment two and so forth. And this will then build certain segments that you can then be attached into your event. As you can see, we have something called link segment. So if we add, add link segment, you'll see that segment one is already there. If you add segment two, you'll see that you can then pick segment two. And you can keep on doing this. If you want to switch back and forth, let's say you wanted to define segment one to be a certain set of things. And as you can see in our, our segment settings, we have geo device, OS version, build version, uh, acquisition type, AB tests. So if you want to segment by a certain set of AB test users, retained users, purchasing users, ad watching users, complete events users. So if you want to say, hey, I want to see a certain set of users that completed this event and you had a subparameter that you can then add a subparameter to equal that of a certain set of events. Whatever you guys want to do. Also within custom data, you guys can also tag a certain user on the SDK. So if you have another, let's say you are running a AB test on your mediation platform, you will be able to tag a certain user with that AB test and then you guys can do the same exact thing instead of using ours, you can then use that custom data tag to tag that user. When you guys start defining segments, they will be compounding the t uh, filters so that you guys know and you guys will see that I'm setting these number of uh, segment types and then you can just link them from there. And if you guys ever want to interchange, you could keep on going back and forth. But for right now, let's not uh, start filtering any users. I don't want to see any filters right now. I just want to use my all users as default. And I just want to say, hmm, what do we want to look at? Well, we have all these certain type of events within our uh, event. We have user install, user app open, ad watched, in app purchases, some custom events. And these are the custom events that we create within our SDK that get auto populated here. As well as if we select a custom event and it has subparameters, you guys can refine that event by its subparameters. Or if I want to aggregate by a certain subparameter, we have something called add aggregate. Overall, right now, the default aggregate of this event is count. And as you can see, we have that down here that says count. It is the default of this event. We do have unique, which is means the unique users that are in or that are doing this event. I want to get the total number of unique users. The average now average is just the count divided by unique users. So what's the average amount of times that a user does this event? And then we have subparameter aggregation. This is quite unique that no other platform has. It unlocks a whole new functionality. So if you guys want to see certain sets of numerical values into your subparameter, you guys can do that on the SDK. And then you guys can do aggregates over those subparameters right here on the dashboard. So if let's say world was a numerical number and that was a subparameter and we want to choose a function to say, I want to see the median number. Well, I want to see the median world that occurs within a level one. So that will tell you, hey, I'm only seeing a complete number of users by level three. Maybe that's showing you that only users really go up to level three and then stop the game because that's the median range of the world. If the world is your oyster when it comes to this, you guys can do anything you want. But right now, we just want to go back to count. And of course, as we know, we can add segments and then link them here. But I just want to see this. I also want to see some breakdowns. I'm going to split my data up by a certain breakdown. Now we have basic groups of date, geo, build, OS, device type, but also we can then break it down by our subparameters. I want to do this by geo. 
I want to do this by world and I want to do this by character. Now we have different graph types. I have bar stacked align. Now I don't think this is going to work really well with geo world and character, but I think it's going to work well with bar and you guys will see why. So if I go and hit apply, that data is going to populate. And as you can see that this is really clean. I have the event stage, the geo breakdown in its own table cell, a world, and then I have a bar chart that's showing me the first, uh, the last, sorry, the last depth of my data. So the character is the last depth, and you guys will see that we have geo broken down by world. That's then breaking down by the count of the certain characters. So I can see by certain worlds and geos the count of the amount of times that this character is being done. Very neat. And of course, we have a table down here that gives you the full output of data, as well as uh, extra types of data you guys will be able to download by CSV. But here's the thing. I want to see another event. What do I do? I just go, I hit add event. Now I want to see how many fails. And as you can see, my breakdowns went away. But here's the great thing. Level failed and level one have the same breakdowns. Do you know what, which means I can go back and I can click and I can see that my custom parameters are still there because event A and event B have the same parameters. So if you have two of uh, two events or even more events that have the same parameters, those parameters will be filtered down to then whatever gets matched within each other so that you can break it down easier. So I want to see all this. As you can see, we see the same date again, but now we have event B that we can also see. Now let's say, okay, that's great. Now I want to see what's the ratio, what's the win and loss ratio. How would I do that? I want to see the win loss ratio of my game. Well, all we need to do now is add formula. Now what formulas are is that it gives you the ability to do a mathematical function. So because event A is level one and event B is level, uh, sorry, event B is level failed, my win-loss ratio would just be whatever it is of A. And to do uh, a formula, we have a checker that will check your mathematical operation and it will automatically know if you're doing something correctly or wrong. And to do, to get, grab an event, you gotta do the curly braces with the event, uh, character in the middle. So event A divided by event B. And that's a win-loss ratio right there. And I want to see the line chart of broken down by geo. I hit apply. And you'll see that we now see a win-loss ratio by geo of the count of events. Now I want to see, you know what? I kind of want to see unique users. There we go. And then we have a data table of your data that you calculated. As you can see, we have a check mark that showed it was a valid formula. And whatever you guys want to do now from here, you guys can do. Let's say I want to see what's the total amount of money that someone buys with virtual returns to purchase. Then if you had a subparameter that you want to aggregate by, let's say you had a subparameter and that subparameter was a value and that value was the amount of money they spent, you can then go, I want to see the sum of that. And then you could go do a formula off of that or you don't want to do a formula, just take it off and you hit apply and you go and we'll see a, the sum of the value of virtual currency that was spent. And of course, because this is in custom workspace, we have a saved area for saved mechanics and you guys will be able to save this filter down and create a custom chart. I hope you guys learned the, uh, the new things that you can do with Mechanic Explorer and please give it a like and subscribe to the Byte Brew channel as well as sign up for Byte Brew and have a great day.